Uh, greetings, students. Uh, what I'm going to go over in this video is going to be the, I guess, the reason behind why I created this lighting scheme in the living room area and how I used the formula to, you know, make sure I had plenty of lighting and um, also some additional lighting as well as uh, various lighting. Um, there's a variability component to my lighting that allows the clients to uh, pretty much choose the type of lighting they want in the area at any given time. Now, the way I started this, I've got a pretty large living room, and I kind of divided the living room into two sections, not by any walls or anything like that, but just in theory. Um, but uh, this one section over here is the entertainment section, and then over here we have what I probably would use for a library, just kind of a sitting area where you can sit and read books and uh, things like that. And uh, there's all kinds of things that it could actually be used for. But uh, to get things started, um, I would recommend that all of you uh, be very observant when you're in your house, when you're in your friends' houses, wherever you go to visit, uh, even commercial buildings like the dentist office, the doctor's office, things like that. Uh, to kind of look at the lighting and see how lighting is arranged and, um, you know, get some ideas. Uh, this lighting scheme that I have right here is a product of, you know, many years. I'm a lot older than you guys. and I've seen a lot of different lighting layouts. I've seen a lot of different trends come and go. Um, but this is kind of a product of all of that. The first thing I did, though, is I kind of measured this area, sort of dividing this area off and measuring that and getting the total area, which was, uh, what was it? I forget, 221 square feet. That's what it was, 221 square feet. And I used the formula uh, 221 times 1.5 and um, divided that by 60, and that gave me 5.5 lamps, 5.5 60-watt lamps put in this room to provide adequate lighting. Of course, you're not going to get a half of a lamp anywhere. Um, I would say five uh, uh, lamps you could probably get out of one ceiling fan. Uh, I know four. Sometimes you can find ceiling fans that have five. And um, then, of course, any other portions of your lighting idea, such here as I have the can lighting going around. So altogether, that's going to give me plenty of lighting. It's also going to be very controlling um, to where the uh, the client can control these light cans with a dimmer switch. So they can tr control this bank of lighting cans on one dimmer switch, this bank of lighting cans on another dimmer switch. And they may not even use the uh, ceiling fan lights at all, just depending on the level of lighting that they desire at any given moment. Um, now, of course, they could if they needed to, if they were putting together furniture or kids' toys or whatever, or if they just needed extra light in the area at night, then they could. They could turn the lighting cans all the way up to maximum uh, intensity and also turn on the ceiling fan. The ceiling fan would be controlled by a different light switch. Uh, and, of course, that would give them more than enough light. Um, they would have plenty, and plus they also have a very nice kind of decorative lighting scheme. Now, some of the reasoning I put into this um, is I said, well, they could use the ceiling fan by itself if they wanted to. Uh, that is an option. And the ceiling fan by itself would have four 60-watt lamps in it, um, providing what I consider to be enough light, even though my formula says I need 5.5 lights instead of four lights. Um, I, said in, I said to myself, well, I don't really need any light back here on or behind the uh, entertainment center. Okay, so that kind of reduces that area a little bit and would make four uh, lamps perfectly adequate. Um, and then, of course, this area back here would also be controlled by a different dimmer switch. So these cans in the back would also be dimmable. Uh, the clients may also bring lighting with them. They may bring a floor lamp or two uh, to put in here. They may make this into a reading chair, and they may put a lamp and a table next to it um, <clears throat> uh, for reading. And um, even the ceiling fan itself would provide adequate light, but of course any lighting that they bring with them is just going to add to that. So that's kind of my reasoning behind what I did here. Um, next is my dining area, and then, of course, this passage area right through here. 
um, I put a fixture in here capable of a 60 watt lamp and calculating this area here um, or actually it's actually capable of two lamps there are big two 60 watt lamps in here if I wanted to of course anytime you have a fixture that uh, is rated for 60 watt lamps you can actually put 40 watt lamps in it if you wanted to that would more or less be the client's um, um, decision to make um, but typically when you sit down to dinner you don't want a blinding light powerful light um, so this is actually also going to be controlled by a dimmer um, you can put two lamps in here of any wattage that you wanted to, anywhere from 20 up to um, 60 watts, um, and control that by a dimmer switch. And at max volume, it would provide plenty of light for this area. Uh, but again, they're probably going to use it at a lower uh, volume than they would, um, say, if they were using it in a living room. Uh, right here, I basically put a light for safety and security. It is mainly for uh, passing through this area at nighttime, but controlled by a separate switch. And uh, as they come into this area, they could turn the switch on or off and uh, make their way on into the kitchen or from the kitchen on into the living room. Okay. So that is the gist behind this lighting scheme. That is how I use the formula. That is how I put uh, some other ideas together and uh, came up with uh, a lighting plan that both provided uh, a, a variability, variability component and also a task component, uh, which I also used the task lighting um, formula to make sure that I was going to have enough in this area for, for task lighting if I needed it. So I used the formula 221 square feet times the 2.5, and then, of course, divided by 60 and that came up with 9.2 lamps um, and that's easily achievable through all the can lights and then the ceiling fan itself. Uh, so that is really it. So um, I hope that helps spark some ideas. I'm going to go over the kitchen as well, go over some of the lighting ideas I'm going to use in the kitchen a little bit later and also show you how to do some things because you'll have to I'm going to use under counter, under cabinet, or under the wall cabinet lighting in this area. So it's going to be lighting under the cabinet where you can't see it, and it's going to shine down onto the surface of the countertop. So, um, you know, watch the next video for that one. And also, don't forget to hit the like button below this video so that more people get to see this video. Um, it'll come up in their search results more readily, um, you know, by uh, having more likes and things like that. So... Anyway, if you have any questions, either, you know, if you're my student, send me an email. If you're not my student, you can leave a message below the video itself. All right, we'll see you later.